Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Royal Chess. Uh, this is uh, my last tenth video um, of the series on Anatoly Carpo and his strategical gems. And uh, today I will show you um, a game between Anatoly Carpo and Vishwanathan Anand um, where Carpo lovely combines strategy and tactics into um, uh, into a very brilliant way of playing, so uh, we will focus um, basically on the um, on the um, connection between strategy and and tactics. This game was played in the uh, quarterfinal um, um, candidates match in Brussels in um, 1991, so it was a rather important game. And let us see what happened. So, Carpo played uh, d4, black played d5, Anand played d5, c4, c6, knight c3, knight f6, uh, sorry, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, e6. So, semi slow is being played, e3, knight bd7. And now, Anand the Carpo played queen c2. This might seem as a um, strange move because white is uh, playing with his queen very early on in the game uh, instead of uh, just developing uh, his his other his other pieces uh, but this makes a lot of sense because uh, normally white played plays uh, bishop d3 but after bishop d3 black can take on c4 takes plays b5 bishop d3 a6 and so on and so on and prepares c5 and uh, in a way, um, here um, White lost the tempo because he moved his bishop before retaking on c4. After queen c2, the idea is that uh, Black, of course, doesn't want to take immediately because then White's bishop would um, take on um, c4 in just one move. So and black needs some some normal active move. For example, bishop e7 is not enough because then black uh, simply uh, after bishop e7, black, white plays something like b3, bishop b2, and black is threatening nothing really. Uh, so he needs the the bishop to be better placed. So Car uh, so Anand played bishop d6 here, which is also the main li line. But now after bishop e2, um, two castlings. That's what was played. D takes c4. Bishop takes c4. The, the, the important difference is that, um, that the black's uh, counterplay with b5 and a6 is a bit slower because as the bishop is on d6, white has got the threat of e4 and e5 with, with, with a nice fork on the knight and the bishop. So basically the idea of the queen c2 line is to, 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 to drag the bishop to d6 and then just develop normally, and but the position of the bishop on d6 makes it more difficult for 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 black to start his normal queenside queenside activity. So here, instead of playing b5, bishop d3, something a6 or some something such, which is also playable, but um, but as I said, uh, white then goes e4 and uh, threatens e5. Now um, now uh, Anand went. Uh, queen e7, so that he can answer e4 with e5. And now normally white has got a lot of ideas in, in these positions. He can play e4, he can play something like rook d1, definitely. Um, he has got to decide where to put his, his c4 bishop. This is a very complex position. I would uh, recommend to you to, to, to try it out with both sides so that you can feel um, how, how, how it goes here. And... Um, Usually the positions are quite dynamical and, and suitable for strategical players, but also for tactical players. Carpo went a3. This is a rather cunning move uh, because it 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 consists of, consists of two ideas. One of them is to put the bishop all the way to a2, from where it sometimes can play bishop b1 and attack h7. And the other idea is to play b to b4 after b5 and then cover the b4 pawn and just try to stop uh, the c6, c5 move forever. Please note that the c8 bishop uh, is the only problem in black's position at the moment. If 
the bishop was, for example, exchanged for the c4 bishop, then black would claim full equality, if not a bit more. Maybe black would be a little, little bit better even already. So black decided not to play e, e, uh, uh, b5 uh, anymore after a3, but instead to use the extra tempo which was given by the a to a3 move and play e5. And now uh, Carpo again played a very um, small move, a very patient move. This is a very uh, Carpo-like style because uh, after h3 there is no thread of something like e4 plus knight g4, e4 plus bishop takes h2, knight g4 and so on. And also this bishop uh, if uh, would love to go to g4. So the, 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 a, the g4 square is quite important for black pieces and why decided to take it from, from his opponent. Now, now it's a bit difficult for black to, to actually make uh, some, some normal uh, move because Okay, if he doesn't want to weak the C, weaken the c6 pawn, he shouldn't go b6. The knight is covering e5, so black went bishop c7, improving a little bit his, 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 the situation of his bishop. And white made the same, he went bishop a2. And now black made a, a small mistake, uh, which is rather interesting, he went h6. Um, and after h6 you need a sharp tactical eye, but also a, 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 a good strategic vision to see what actually is wrong with this move. And um, a good positional player would, would note immediately that this f5 square is a very good square for the knight. And a good tactical player would also see that this g6 square is, um, is available to, to white's knight because of the pin uh, on the a to g8 diagonal. So white went knight h4 uh, and he's uh, threatening to attack knight g6 or knight f5. Black went rook e8 because he doesn't want to lose the exchange naturally. Queen, uh, knight f5, queen f8. So white was able to to improve his position quite a, quite a lot. It's uh, it's, it's very typical that the knight comes to f5 after uh, black plays something like h7, h6, because after h7, h6 it's much more difficult to, 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 to push the knight out of the f5 square. Now white jump knight b5, which is another lovely move. Uh, as you can see, the knights ha have, come, have become crazy. Um, the c7 uh, bishop is, is attacked. And of course, c takes b5, queen takes c7 is, is nothing uh, Karp, uh, Anand would love to play because white's got two, two bishops and a better structure. So this is definitely not the way for black. So black simply retreated bishop b8. And of course, now the, the, the b5 knight is already hanging. But white still can play bishop d2 because after c takes b5, he can uh, simply... Um, uh, catch the queen on f8 and uh, get a, de a decisive material advantage. So after bishop d2, black had to play a5. And against you can see the connection between strategy and tactics that with the tactical blow uh, bishop d2, bishop b4, uh, white was able to get um, a to, to force a weakness, uh, weakening a move from black because after a5 it's it's much more difficult to imagine that for example black would attack the white center with c6 c5 in in the in the close future because of the weakness of the b5 square so now white took on 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 uh, e5 as you can see this this knight on b5 seems to have quite a strong uh, stamina and strong will power that it still stays there uh, black took and white uh, again made a, uh, one more move before retreating with the knight. Um, it's it's um, very difficult for, for black to do anything uh, more active than bishop b8. And now the white knight finally returned. So as you can see, there was a lot of tactical skirmish going on um, in, the last, in the last few moves. Um, but the result is, is a strategically uh, a very, very nice position for white because his plan is, is nice and simple. After pushing the, 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 the pawn to e5, um, black uh, 
position would simply fall apart. On the other hand, for black it's much more difficult to create any counterplay because his majority on the queen side is, is, is terribly weakened by the a7, a5 move and also, as you can see, his pieces are not very impressive. So, black went uh, queen, uh, rook d8 and now, again, a very very interesting moment uh, of, of, of Anatoly Karpo. Of course, he could have played something like e4 immediately, but that would uh, make the, the situation a bit more double-edged, because after knight c5, e5, black can, for example, take on d2, queen d2, knight fe4, takes, takes, and as this knight is hanging on f5, uh, white is, will not simply be an exchange up. Of course, he can include knight takes h6, takes, and play something like queen e1, and um, be maybe still better, but this is a much more double-edged position than uh, what will happen in the game. So, again, uh, Karpo showed quite a lot of patience. He's not going e4, e5, e3, e4, e5 immediately. Instead, he went bishop e1, and after... Uh, and that the bishop is going out of the way of the d8 rook, and also it's it's just heading for h4 and 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 for the pin. Uh, now black uh, doesn't want didn't want to be pinned, so he went knight h7, bishop h4, knight df6. So as you can see, again with tack. Karpo needed tactics to understand that the, uh, the, the bishop on d2 is not very stable, but he needed strategical vision to see that he, he can put it to h4, and and uh, this in, with this way increased uh, the uh, attacking potential of his army. Uh, as you can see, this position must be more or less won for white, or at least much much better because uh, all his pieces are on maximum of their uh, activity so black's position should should uh, somehow break down somewhere now white played rook d1 maybe this is the moment where the pieces have the maximum activity because b before this move the a1 rook was still quite passive and now it's very difficult to to find a good move for black but okay black took on d1 took d1 and played bishop e6, which is a very understandable uh, move. Be this this uh, pressure along the a2, g8 diagonal was very, very unpleasant. But um, the, the problem with this move is that white can already, already get some material. So white took on e6, f takes e6, and now instead of, of, the, of the bishop, which is missing on a2, uh, white included his queen into the game and the queen uh, is using the same diagonal so now the e6 pawn is hanging and for example queen f7 is not a very good idea because white can give a check and after knight f8 go knight d6 queen e7 knight b7 for example and you can see how how passive and how how desperately passive black species are. This f8 knight is pinned uh, because of the d8 rook, this b8 bishop is uh, pinned because of the d8 rook, and this knight is pinned because of the of the bishop. And moreover, black is uh, pawned down, so he's just just lost. So after queen b3, Anand went probably in the time trouble, he went queen e8, but now white can already play a very nice move. He took on g7. This is a purely tactical solution. The thing is that after king takes g7, queen takes on b7 and attacks the a8 rook and also the, 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 the g7 king. So after knight g7, uh, Anand could find nothing better than queen f7. Now after the check on d8, black would simply take on g7, so white took on e6 instead. And of course now white is a uh, it's, it's just two pawns up, and, and, and that's quite a lot. Black went bishop a7. And now also the technical part, uh, which will not be very long, but also the technical part of the game is 
is quite interesting, but because right now uh, many of us would try to find some some attacking solution, like uh, find out how how to um, how to give a maid or something. But Carpo instead played uh, several very very patient moves. He played Bishop F2, which seems to be passive, but okay, the E3 pawn uh, was hanging, so why not? Now black went rook e8, and again um, Capo made a very passive move, knight d4, uh, black took, white took, black took, and now white took, took, and took on a5. So basically white was winning, or Capo was winning just to, uh, to retreat with his pieces, because he took two pawns, so why not just exchange some pieces and get into, into some endgame, which is, which is uh, easily won. And it definitely was easily won because uh, Anand was uh, decided to simply give up here and and simply resigned and and that was it. So this was a very very interesting and very nice game on uh, the cooperation of uh, the, the the strategical element of the game and the tactical element of the game, where Carpo uh, needed to use his strategical vision to see where his pieces belong, and the tactical vision. Uh, to to find out how to get them uh, there. Okay, so this that was it. Um, thank you for watching my series on Anatoly Carpo and his uh, strategical gems, and I'm looking forward to meet you uh, in, uh, in in near future with some other project um, for Royal Chess uh, or uh, any any other web page or YouTube channel. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.